<laughs> Cheers, Dan. <laughs> now, mention the name Lloyd Webber, and you know we're talking music. Andrew, of course, a world-famous composer, and Julian, an internationally renowned cellist. Julian's on a mini tour of the Midlands at the moment. He is. He was in Hereford at the weekend. Tonight, he's in Stratford-upon-Avon, and tomorrow afternoon, Birmingham Town Hall. And next, been to meet him at his home in Gloucestershire. Let's uh, start, uh, Julian, by talking about Birmingham Town Hall, where you're about to perform. Yeah, I mean, I, I played there in the old days before it was renovated, and I've played there since. I think it's much better now. It sounds much better. Um, it's a terrific acoustic in there. And, I mean, you, you see the names that have appeared in that place. Obviously, Elgar conducted there. I mean, I think Dickens uh, gave the first ever reading of the Christmas Carol there. And Buddy Holly, another great... Uh, idol of mine. And of course you'll be performing there with your wife, which doesn't happen very often. It's the first time. You know, we got, we got married last year. She's a very, very good cellist and uh, it's a, the first time uh, I've done concerts with her, so it's very exciting. Now, of course, uh, you've recently strengthened your links with this region musically, haven't you? Yes, I've started uh, an association with the Orchestra of the Swan but that's based in Stratford-on-Avon. Wonderful group of young players, excellent conductor David Curtis, so it's very exciting. And talking about the region, you're a long-time resident of the, of the Cotswolds. Yes, I've been here now over, over 20 years. It's just a brilliant place to be able to really concentrate and uh, get the right thoughts for making music. Can we go back to your childhood now and perhaps I can ask you why you chose the cello as a young lad. I chose the cello because my mother, um, who specialised in teaching young children the piano, she tried to teach me the piano and had her biggest failure. And she took me to an orchestral concert in London and I saw the cello there in the orchestra and I asked to play one of those. And as I said, I was only four. But I was very only disappointed. Four. Yeah, I was only four. But uh, this tenth size cello come, I, I wanted something like this that I'd seen. Um, but this tiny little thing come and I thought that wasn't right at all. But I enjoyed playing it, I loved it. But did you know you were musical? There was so much music in the family, you know, my father was a composer and organist and my mother had pupils coming all the time. Of course my brother Andrew was um, beginning to, you know, play on the piano musicals. We were just surrounded by music, so I mean, it, I, music was just there for me and I took it. Are you sitting here with your faithful Strad? What is its value to you? In terms of cello playing, it's everything to me. I don't have another cello. I use it for everything, principally because I, I wouldn't want to go out there and give second best. It's my sound now. But you have to look after your hands. You wouldn't go out playing conkers or cricket or something, would you? Or chopping wood. I would love to have done far more sport in my life. I'm a great football supporter, as I know you are. Um, and I'd love to have played the game myself. But, uh, you know, you, I mean, what sports can you do that, that you're not likely to go and break a finger somehow? I tried to hit them once, and it turned out that you had to break every finger on every hand to actually get any money. So I thought, no. <laughs> Julian, thanks very much. <laughs> quite a privilege to be in the room with those two, Jarjean and, and uh, Julian. They don't need a TV in the house, do no, they, to indeed. while away the hours? No, he's actually giving a masterclass at the Elgar Theatre in Worcester, I think, on November the 18th. Yeah. So if you're really keen to learn about the cello, that's the thing to do. Yeah, he is the one And to he's teach football you. crazy. Yeah, not so leaving town, about, though, is no, he? Late Norian. Late we chatted Norian. for hours about that. He's also <laughs> the first guy to have a busker's licence for London Underground. So and there's so many interesting things about him. Yeah. What is he for your tube train? Yeah, and he's at Birmingham Town all tomorrow, half past two. Let's get the weather now. Here's your folly. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Well, we've had reports of some lively showers right across the region today and a bit of wintriness as well towards the west, but certainly nothing to get worked up about. The main focus for those was over Snowdonia and also the north of the country. But it is an indication.